to pull from that. Mm. Oh, I bet that was interesting. Yeah, I could see that though. It's very, it's Absolutely. a very detailed book and and very emotional. So I can see you really getting oh, into yeah. the reading of it. Yeah, the the emotional parts are definitely some starts and stops I had to do because you get carried away by the emotion <laughs> of the story. Now, when you're reading a book like that, how far do you go? Like if it's a female character or a, a child character, how far do you go in changing your voice so the listener can determine that, oh, this is now, even if they don't, and when they when they get into the book, I'm sure they can figure out who's who, mm-hmm. right? But when you're narrating a book, it's a little bit different because when you're reading it, you see the quotes, you see who's saying this and who's saying that. Mm-hmm. When you're expressing the range of characters, how do you handle that? Well, with a male voice, you can either have a very bass voice or you can lift it up to more of a natural delivery. Mm-hmm. But with a female voice, you have a slight lilt to it. So all you're trying to do is have a difference. You can tell a difference between the female and the male voice, but it's not over dramatized okay. because right. then it's kind of disconcerting. Yeah, that would be a little bit. Well, I then think. you probably focus too much on the, the character's voices, voice. Yeah, yeah. The voices. Right. There must be a fine line to draw on that one. It's so true. Yep, absolutely. So that's, uh, that's why you, you just want to be able to tell that, okay, there's a different person talking now. Mm-hmm. Well, that makes oh, and sense. And they've gone back to the first person. So like that. Oh, okay. And that way you have a nice flow too. So that makes sense. Absolutely. And then there's also different variations on if you're speaking about a scene in general mm-hmm. or if you're talking, um, have some exposition about two characters that are talking to each other. Yes, so, so you have to shift from setting the stage or setting the environment mm-hmm. and then introduce the characters with your voice right? and then separate the characters with your voice. That requires Absolutely. a lot of talent. Yeah, that, that was good, Ron. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Yeah. So, okay, my question is, when clients provide you with a script to read in a recording studio, how quickly do you have to develop the voice that goes with it, and do they give you a little time to rehearse? Sometimes you're provided sides, which are are known as the the script that you'll be reading Uh within a day or two. But more times than not, um, the script will change once you get into the studio, especially if there is a sound engineer. A, a director and then also the, the client, the, the company, the corporate client who's also in, in the booth. Mm-hmm. So the script will may, I may only have like 10 to 15 minutes to prepare. So at that point you look over the script, you get roughly familiar with it right. and then you just rely on your training and just go for it. I'm curious, are you reading from a piece of paper, a paper script, or is there an actual teleprompter? It depends on the studio, Mm. but normally I read from a screen, Mm -hmm. so you don't hear the rustling of paper while you're, um, while you're doing that, because there is a process called Mm physicating, which is using your hands and your body as your reading the script so you can really get into whatever right, right. you're whatever you're trying to do. So and that adds so much to the read that is kind of in the background of the and that's part of the whole voice acting. Physicating, I really like that because that's a that's when, a neat word. Well when we're podcasting Angie has a tendency to physicate more than I do. <laughs> more than I'm supposed to, I think, really. And, and occasionally I have to remind her not to bang the table. Yeah. Um, although or, it never seems bump, to pick or up. Or bump the microphone. I've done that before. Yes, or oh, bump yeah. the microphone. You start flailing your hands and whammo right into the microphone. Yeah, and then you have a problem. Yeah, because I remember going to places where we were doing commercials and I look at the script after it was handed to the voiceover person and then there would be marks all over it. You know, they would take this out, just that, remove this. They would make commas and redline it and everything else. Yeah. The original script, once they read it, they go, it sounds great when somebody writes it, but it's a whole different story when you have to sit there and talk it. Absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so I have a request for a voice. How about giving us a voice for a British butler? Hey. Well, you see, Auntie, 
I noticed that you Americans like that dreadful coffee. It's much more refined to drink a spot of Earl Grey tea every morning. Anything else is simply preposterous. Uh-huh. <laughs> we need one of those. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we need a butler. I love I it. I think it would be a bit too much travel for you. <laughs> judging you all the time. Probably. <laughs> yeah, really. An Earl Grey could be kind of stiff. Although you could always put a shot of something in it. <laughs> I, you know, I'm sure the some of the demands on voice acting can be pretty frustrating. Have you experienced that? And how do you handle that? Well, sometimes you can be sitting into, first of all, you're sitting in a padded room. And what I, what I you do that on purpose because you don't want your voice to go out of the room. So it goes directly into the microphone, but you also don't want any external noise coming into the room. Mm-hmm. So that's a challenge, making sure your space is set up correctly. The other part is voice health, yeah. which is crucial. It's, you know, not no alcohol, mm-hmm. try to do no dairy because mm-hmm. that, Flam. Gives you that that phlegm and that cre- um, you know limits the sound and the natural resonance of your voice. Right. But it's an extremely competitive career, so marketing is definitely the key. It's very entrepreneurial, so much so that most most will call themselves solopreneurs mm-hmm. because you end up recording, you end up doing the editing. And, and the mastering, and you do it all all by yourself. Well, we know you've been moving towards this for quite some time, and uh, you've shared with us it's been difficult, the difficult parts of the process to overcome. And what what do you think was the hardest thing for you to overcome? Yeah. I know marketing is an issue for everybody. Yeah, marketing is right. tough. For me, because I just haven't been a part of that world, it's social media and being able to assign your time between doing your auditions, you know, doing the jobs that you've been booked on, Mm -hmm. but also reaching out, doing direct marketing is the best way to go about it. Right. You have to have a thick skin because it gets into those numbers of, you know, a hundred no's for every yes that you hear. Mm -hmm. And a yes could be anything from, you know, booking an actual job with a local company to just being on someone's roster, a a casting director's roster for the next time that Mm -hmm. they actually have work that fits your voice. Well, that's the interesting thing is it's called a voice actor and all actors experience that, you know, you're always looking for the a job and you want to be able to show your talents and you got to get your talents in front of an audience. And that is, that's going to be very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. And as you right. mentioned, it can be kind of a competitive thing. So you have to be able to stand out. Yeah. 